Okay, good morning everybody. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are located today. We pay our respects to the elders past and present. Um, National Sorry Day in Australia is a chance for people to come together and acknowledge and understand the impact of on Australia's stolen generations, their families, communities, and take a step towards healing. I'm not going to sit here and talk, apart from saying that I want to introduce Herbie um, to say a few words on what um, Sorry Day means to him. Good morning, everybody. Um, today, the 26th of May, is a very important day to all Aboriginal people within Australia, especially uh, the Stolen Generation people. Uh, 2000, 1998, sorry, um, was the first day the first National Sorry Day after the tabling of the report, the Bring Them Home report, which was about the uh, removal or the forced removal of Aboriginal children from their families and communities. Uh, it still went on right through until the 80s, uh, the, the removal practices, but it was done through the government at the time initially and through the missionaries um, who thought that uh, they could uh, improve the lives of Aboriginal children by fostering them out, fostering them out, or putting them into uh, orphanages. Um, my story is uh, a little bit far removed from that, but I, under the under the welfare system of the time, I am considered a uh, stolen generation member. So uh, I will tell you my story um, directly. Uh, when I was about uh, 30 months old, um, my natural father passed away of a heart, atta a heart attack at a very young age. Um, <coughs> and my older brother Lionel became the patriarch of the family, or the leader of the family, being the uh, eldest, eldest boy. Uh, and some harsh decisions had to be made, um, especially uh, for me, because I was the youngest at the time. Uh, luckily, they had uh, Lionel had friends named Maury and Lila Burns who he asked could they uh, come and take care of me uh, until they got the sorry business over and done with, or the funeral, or the funeral uh, as we know it today. Um, what Lionel didn't know at the time was that um, Maury was a policeman in Drew, and um, Mum was a housewife with uh, three daughters and a son. So uh, what Lionel didn't know at the time was that I, uh, Li uh, Murray was being relocated to a little town called Speed. Uh, that's up in the uh, Mallee uh, wheat, wheat and sheep battle area. And um, so off I went with them. Um, they were a loving family. I was brought up, uh, as you would be with a policeman as a father, in a very good household. I had a, a great education, um, loved sport, I'd done all the things that you used to do as a kid. And um, later on in life, and because of time and circumstance, Speedy is probably about eight hours away from, uh, from Drawn, where I was born, so um, visits and things for family was not an option. Uh, later on in life, Dad got relocated to Ballarat as a policeman. Um, and I went to school there, finished all my schooling here, uh, there in Ballarat. But I give it, and Lionel at the time uh, was a lot older then, had a vehicle, could get, come and see me and pick me up and see me and what have you, tell me about the family and how they're going. Um, and they encouraged me to go back and see them, as my adopted parents did too, and uh, went down and seen them when I was about 12 years of age. Probably one of the scariest things I ever did. Um, because I didn't know whether I was coming back to the family that I'd been brought up with. So uh, it turned out it was a great day. Met all my, met all my other siblings. Um, and to this day, I still have contact with them, which was great. Um, the Stolen Generation members have a, uh, a different story. And uh, I think on Tuesday, Paul sent us through a, uh, an email outlining a story of the river and I'm going to put a bit of a twist on that. I think Ali, you received that. And there's a guy named Mr Ian Trust who's in charge of the Woonan Foundation in Kununurra in the East Kimberley. 
I know Ian pretty well. And he was talking about uh, the river and how 40% of uh, Aboriginal parents in that area equip their children with the fundamentals of life to go to school, have a great education, eat healthy, the things that we just take for granted. Anyway, um, the river itself, they're, they're standing on this side of the river and on the other side of the river there's the opportunities that we all have, jobs, education, uh, housing and a wage. But to get from that side to this side, it was the most difficult thing. And Ian was saying that uh, you get into that river and you get floated, away, uh, floated along with the current. That current has a name and it's called welfare. A lot of people are welfare dependent, Aboriginal people, but as they're floating down the river, Ian spoke about two crocodiles that are there, uh, alcohol and drugs. Those three combined are what the majority of the stolen generation are made up of today. They find it very difficult to get out of that, that welfare mentality. Um, and it's very hard for them to um, cope to the point where a lot of them don't see life or do anything for them or any justice and they take their own life. So uh, it's very, very hard. Um, and as they're floating down, you know, I know lots of people are bobbing up and down in that river today. But I know that I'm on this side of the river and um, sooner or later one will float by and the opportunity that I have here today in this job, I can grab them by the hand, um, pull them out of that river and uh, do you know what? And do you know why? Because they're survivors and they always will be. Thanks.